welcome back to the channel guys. So in today's video, we'll be attempting to create a high quality React Native animation. So as you can see here, I found this demo online. And when you click the sign in button, you see that animation nicely slides up. In this video, we'll only be creating the first part of this animation. So let's see how it's going to look on an actual device. When we click sign in, firstly, the sign in and sign in with Facebook buttons slide out. The background slides up. And then we get this cross button here, which rotates in nicely. If we click the cross button, we notice that the animation reverses. Let's just see that again. So we'll be using React Native Reanimated for our animations so that we can keep our animations at 60 frames per second. And to get the curve on the image background, we'll be using React Native SVG. So as always, this should be fun to build. So let's. So as always, I have an empty React Native project that I've created with Expo and I'm running it on my iPhone 10 simulator. The only additional thing that I have here is that I've got the background image in my assets folder. I'll also put a link for this image in the description so that you guys can get it. So let's start by creating the UI. Whenever we're using an image as a background in our app, it's important for us to first load the image and then display the app. Otherwise we'll get that flicker effect when that image appears. So for that, I'm going to first load in my assets using the asset library available with Expo and then we'll go ahead and set up the app. So the first thing we'll do is we'll say Expo install Expo asset. Then on top here, we'll go ahead and import asset from Expo. I'm going to get rid of this function and change this into a class. So we'll say export default class app extends react.component. Inside this, we'll have a render method and then we'll return an empty view. Now here, let's set up our constructor within which we'll first call super. We'll set up an initial state which will determine if our app is ready to show the image or not. So we'll say is ready and we'll set that to false. Now let's head over to the export documentation. So here, under preloading and caching assets, we already have a set of functions written for us which will help us load our assets. So here, since we don't have any fonts, I'm just going to copy this cache images method. Come back to our app and paste it in here at the top. Next, the method that we need is this async load asset async method. So I'm just going to copy that and paste it in here below our constructor. Where we have the image link, I'm going to remove that. And in this require, I'm just going to pass in bg.jpg. We also don't have any fonts, so I'm going to get rid of font assets. And here in our promise.all, I'll just get rid of font assets as well. So lastly, from the render method here, we'll copy this out and paste it here in our render method. What this does is it basically just checks if the state is not ready, then display the app loading, otherwise return the app. For this, we need to go ahead and import an app loading from Expo as well. So here on top, we'll just say import app loading from Expo. And this should actually be Expo-asset. So we're loading in our assets in app.js, we'll actually go set up our app in another file and import it in here so that we don't clutter it. So for that, I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder here and call that app. And inside that, I'll create a new file call that index.js. Inside this, I'm just going to import in a component using my custom snippets, which are available in the description. And here I'm just going to call this music app. Then I'm going to save that, come back to app.js. Let's import music app here. From my app folder, we have the index.js. And here where we're passing in the view, let's pass in music app. So now let's head over to our index.js file and set up the UI. So here let's get rid of this view, pass in another view. Let's style that view by giving it a flex of one. And let's give it a background color of white. Within that view, I'll put in another view, style that view by positioning it absolutely to take up the complete screen. So we'll say style sheet or absolute fill. And inside this we'll pass in an image. Let's go ahead and import image here. For the source of the image, we'll require 
go into assets folder and extract bg.jpg. We'll also style the image, give it a flex of one so that it takes up the complete space of the parent, give it a height of null and a width of null. So there we see our image nicely displays. Now below this view, we'll pass in another view. This will contain our buttons. Let's style this view and give it a height. We want it to be one third of the screen height and we want it to display her at the bottom. So for that, let's first go ahead and import dimensions from React Native and let's extract out the width and height. So we'll say width, comma height is equal to dimensions dot get window. Here for the height, we'll say height divided by three and let's just give it a background color of white for now. So we see that that view appears here at the top. We want it to be at the bottom. So to our parent view, let's pass in justify content and set that to flex end. Now let's set up our buttons. For now, we'll just use views to set up our buttons and later we'll add our touchable opacity to it. So I'm going to pass in a view. The style is going to have is styles.button. Inside that we'll have a text, which will say sign in. Let's go ahead and set up styles.button. So here we'll say button. Let's give it a background color of white and let's remove the background color we had added earlier to the parent view because that was only to display it. Give it a height of 70. Let's give it a margin horizontal of 20. So that's space 20 from each side. Let's add a border radius of 35. Let's align items to the center and justify content to the center. And let's also style the text. So we'll just style that inline by giving it a font size of 20, font weight of bold, and that looks pretty nice. Next, I'm just gonna duplicate this view, change this to sign in with Facebook, and I'm just gonna spread this style inside so that we can add additional styles by using the spread operator. And here we'll pass in background color, and the color we want is similar to the Facebook color which is this bright blue. To the text here, let's give that a color of white. And let's just space the buttons out from each other by giving the button a margin vertical of five. We'll also just center these buttons in this view by giving this parent view a justify content of center. So that completes our base UI. In the next video, we'll go ahead and start animating this view.